This is the Jumper T16, and it's got all my quadcopters bound to it. Now, some of those copters are bound to the Crossfire module, and that means that if I want to move to a different radio, hmm, the first thing I need to do is copy all my models from one to the other, and then the second thing I need to do is just put that Crossfire module in the back of the radio, and the bind transfers over. But what about all my other non-Crossfire models? What about, like, this guy here, which has a FreeSky RXSR? Wouldn't it be nice if there was a way that I could copy the binding information from all my free sky models on this radio over to this radio, and then they would just be bound to both radios at the same time? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Well, in case you didn't figure it out from the intro, that is exactly what we're going to learn to do today. We're going to learn to clone our bind information from one multi-protocol module to another. And that's not just useful if you're switching from one radio to another. It's also useful if you have more than one radio. By cloning the bind information to the different radios, you could have all your quads bound to more than one radio. What happens if you turn them both on at the same time? I don't know. But for those of you who are looking for this feature, this is a pretty big freaking deal. Uh, racers who want to have a backup radio, they don't have to rebind. Or uh, instructors who want to let more than one student control a quad, not at the same time. But there's a lot of exciting potential uses for this. If you want this to work, there are a few gotchas. This is the change log for the version of the multi-protocol module firmware that supports this. And in addition to having the latest version of the multi-protocol module firmware, you also need to have OpenTX 238 Nightly version 184. This is not yet in OpenTX. You need to be running a, a nightly version of OpenTX. If you want to know how to install a nightly version of OpenTX, you can look at my video for how to move models over to the Radio Master TX16S. It turns out that in order to do that, you have to flash a nightly build. So although that's not the actual focus of the tutorial, it will show you how to do it. Um, link in the video description, of course. You also need to update the firmware on your multi-protocol module. I'll put a link in the video description to how to do that as well. Once you've got the correct firmware installed, copying the bind information is pretty simple. In the radio that you are going to clone to, you're going to go to the model setup screen, and you're going to go down to internal RF, and you're going to set it to multi-protocol, the sub-protocol is going to be FreeSkyRx, and the sub-protocol sub, sub is going to be CloneTX. Yeah, CloneTX. Now we're going to take the radio that I'm cloning from, and we're going to go to a FreeSky D16 or D8, and this does work with both EU and FCC firmware, and it works with 2.1, 2.0, and pre-2.0 firmware versions but it does not work with FreeSky Access, only ACCST, D16, and D8. We're going to go to that model. We're going to scroll down, and we're going to basically bind this radio to this one. That's how it works. So on this radio, I'm going to highlight bind, and it's in binding. And then on this radio, I'm going to hit bind, and did it work? Let's find out. So first I'm going to just turn one radio off because I don't know what happens if they're both on. Which one's in charge? I don't know. And it could be bad. So be, be safe. But So here's a, just a random quadcopter I have laying around. And if I plug it in, you can see that the LED goes green. It is bound to the jumper T16. And if I turn the jumper off, goes red and now if I turn the radio master on it should go green again Welcome to TX. it didn't the reason that it didn't work is that I'm still in the free Skyrex clone TX protocol what I need to do is go back to the free sky protocol and then change the sub protocol to d16 cloned
So there are three slots that are used to clone a binding ID. One of them is for D8, one is for D16 version pre 2.0, and one of them is for D16 version 2.0 and later. And you can only have one cloned receiver ID for each of those. So if you were thinking you could get a whole bunch of radio identifiers and clone them all, you can only have one clone. So you've got your original identifier, which you would select by changing just to regular D16 mode, and then the cloned one, which is in this slot. So, if I get in here, if I change this to D16 cloned, it should go green. No. The other stipulation is that if you're binding a D16 receiver, then the receiver number here must be the same on the new radio as it was on the old radio. On my old radio, the receiver number for this model or for this receiver was receiver number one. So we're gonna need to change that to the same thing. And oh, sure enough, we're bound. That's pretty freaking cool. That's pretty freaking cool. But what I really wanna know is what happens when they're both on at the same time? So like right now, here's a radio master and I can arm the quad. Everything's working. Now, if I turn the T16 on. Does it like go into fail safe? No. So the arming is not working. I guess that's good. Does this one still work? No. Okay. Oh, oh. Well, okay, what if I turn this one off? Receiver still Does it, yeah, thank you, I know. Okay, that one, the receiver briefly went into fail safe and then recovered. Now this one works. Now if I turn this one back on. Welcome to our Oh, so it just seems like whichever one's turned on first works, but then the minute, I, I bet I know what's happening. These uh, receivers use a modulation scheme called frequency hopping, in which they randomly hop, but, well, pseudo-randomly hop between a sequence of frequencies. And at the moment that they link up, the radio communicates to the receiver what the frequency hopping pattern is going to be that they're using. Um, once that's established, then when the other one comes up on a different frequency hopping pattern, they can't even see the receiver. Um, I don't know for a fact that that's how free sky protocol works, but that's how frequency hopping works in other radio disciplines. And I, I guess that's probably what's happening here. Basically the first radio that powers up has control and until it powers down, it keeps control, but there's no conflict and there's no like, oh, I turned this one on. So fail safe, you know, I fail safe or something. That's pretty flippin' cool. That's pretty flippin' cool. As somebody who has a bunch of radios that I potentially, you know, use, the ability to like test a bunch of different, normally if I get a new radio to test, I just bind like one quad to it and then I never fly anything else on it because I don't want to move all my quads over to it just to maybe not keep it. But this is pretty freaking cool. I, uh, I, I always say you're gonna learn something today but today I really feel like I delivered. I hope you uh, appreciate, I hope you appreciate the work that the folks over on the multi-protocol project are doing. Um, the multi-protocol project has existed long before folks like Jumper and Radio Master came around and started building products to really take advantage of their work. These guys are amazing. They have built in support for, they cracked FreeSky, ACCSD 2.1. They recently added FreeSky Long Range L Series mode. They've got an open source 900 megahertz firmware that's compatible with uh, FreeSky. FreeSky must hate these guys. <laughs> but customers, users like us, gotta love them. So it's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.